this afternoon, we have a lot to cover and little time to cover it. So we will have to move pretty quickly. Um, so I'm going to show a bunch of different material, which I think you need to see, but which is not um, not all organized in a sort of coherent storyline or narrative. Um, <clears throat> rather, it's a set of essentials and a set of things that were requested by the work. Um, the first of them, in, in a way, is different than the others um, in the sense that we won't be pursuing as much hence on building for it. It's rather more sort of showing. Um, and that is, uh, by request, uh, information on action charts. And action charts, I think, are one of these underappreciated mechanisms within any logic um, for, for um, characterizing in a visual form um, reasoning and decision-making, more generally algorithms, but I think where they really shine is communicating decisions. And um, they can be used very artfully to sort of reason about um, uh, choices um, uh, and, and the, the decision-making process. So I'd like to go through some examples for these. And um, I'm going to... Uh, walk through some with you of access. And if I had my druthers, I'd walk through a few more as well, which um, are not in the example models because they have encumbrances associated with them, but um, which, you know, I think provide next nice illustrations of kind of use of them. Um, I don't want to spend too much time. I think you'll get the, the basic gist of them. But we'll, uh, I think, show a couple varieties of them. So the first of them that I want to show is actually in a model that we, with which we first opened the boot camp. So it was in this um, uh, GIS, um, uh, GIS model. Um, so let's go, if we could, uh, to open that up. It's called GIS Food and Physical Activity, a PA environment. Um, and uh, if you open it up, um, I'm going to open up person now. Um, um, probably you'll start to, to recognize some some features here that weren't so obvious. Um, is, uh, is that? Oh, share the screen. Thank you. Um, so um, we have a stock and flow model characterizing dynamics of weight. Remember, stock, stock and flow models provide this um, very transparent way of characterizing evolution of continuous state systems. Um, at once, they characterize the states, the actions that change states, the rate of flows, and the rules that govern those actions on what they depend. Um, and uh, I'm trying to get the chat number up. Could, um, here we go. Um, is, is audio faint? Is that it? Um, can anyone comment on that? I, I see a reference to audio. How is the audio for everyone in the room? I mean, are you folks okay? Um, oh, in and out. Okay. Um, muffled. Okay. So um, let's try relocating this playful mic. Um, I, I thought that side would have been better. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of pulling it out and futzing on it on my collar here. Um, uh, the other option is to try to increase it with the, uh, with the built-in audio of the computer, but, um, <clears throat> okay, I, th I think we'll try it like that. I suspect it's going to be better. Okay, so, um, as I was saying, we have, uh, uh, use of stock and flow models to capture dynamics of a continuous system, um, continuous state system, weight up and down. Um, and we have state charts uh, depicting food seeking behavior. But down here below, we have uh, something called an action chart. And um, action charts uh, provide this visual illustration um, of the flow of 
a general algorithm. But as I said, I, I think where they really shine is in depicting decision-making processes. And so it is here. So when someone goes to eat a meal, um, uh, you, you know, choices, you know, do we have both types of food to choose from? You know, one, one that handles that true, and in which case it flips a coin. Otherwise, um, it asks, okay, what type do we have? And, and, and chooses accordingly. Now, this is a characterization visually of a function, it turns out, okay? Um, and uh, if you were to go and look and, and, and see where this uh, person eats, you'd find that um, the eat meal is actually called. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll use this to illustrate any logic search option. Um, I realized I probably hadn't hadn't shown that yet. So if you, this is a very important option in any logic. If you do control F or I don't know what it is on Mac, option F, read, command F. Um, if you do eat meal, you search for eat meal, um, uh, you'll find that there's an event and not surprisingly, it's called the eat meal event. And it's located over here. We just didn't see it. And you can find that it's searched I'm sorry, that it calls off to this eat meal function. So calling that function, it's actually calling off to this state chart like that. Okay. And um, as a function, it, it can actually take information it needs to do its job, just like taking the sign if an angle needs a sign in degrees or in radians or what have you to, to, to take the sign apply the sign function to it. So it so it is here. So we could have it take so-called arguments or parameters, take information to do its job. <coughs> but in this case it doesn't need to. Um, so we called it. Um, and and then each of these blocks in fact has code for it. You can see this code. Um, behind each of these is a bit of code. But the action chart hides that code and gives a description instead, a description that someone could understand. Um, and as a result, it provides this sort of self-documenting um, algorithm, self-documenting function, which, which has some logic that has, um, uh, you know, sort of lay explanation given or, or or, or kind of vernacular explanation um, that can be transparent, and then some code that you can always look at uh, if you want to do so. Um, now, a couple more things about, about these state charts. Um, uh, so they, they typically involve a sequence. So this involves a sequence of these sort of if statements and so on um, um, that, are, that are based on a decision. If statements and then some actions to be taken, um, uh, and you know they flow through and then they then they leave. They they're done their work. That's a, this return. So they start with one of these, which is head of an action chart, and then they go to the return value, um, and they can have more than one. Um, so this provides a way of, of making visual accessible um, code or or um, reasoning, particularly when it comes to decision. So I'm going to show some other examples of this. Um, so one would be if we were to go um, go into uh, the folders provided of example models, um, and I'm trying to figure out the best window in which uh, to perform. On this, I think I'll maybe temporarily drag this over here. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. no I really need to get it. Boom. Um, there we go. Um, and here we go. This. Um, we'll go. This is the participant resources for the boot camp. And <clears throat> there's actually uh, a for sharing in class. And then there's a primary care model. So, okay, 
And uh, these are some models built with Kurt Stange and Becca Etz, Will Miller, um, uh, who of course are very well known to Aaron here. But uh, one of them, one of these models is called whole person patient model fine. Okay. And if you download that, um, <clears throat> this involves a person's engagement with the care system. Um, so we're going to go open said model. Here we go. Hey, come on. Open. And there we go. Oh, sorry. It was it was in for sharing in class only. And then primary care model. Yeah, so these you know, some of these models have are built collaboratively and I don't want to just say, you know, copy them um, liberally with attribution. But, you know, this this is kind of shared a, a little bit more of a confidential basis. Um, and I, I may classify some other models in there, may add some. Um, but if you open this model, what you'll find is uh, uh, there's a rather articulated theory um, that's built up here about um, care seeking behavior and care engagements with physicians. Um, and this was built up in a one week hackathon with uh, Kurt Sange and, and, Becca and, and Will, um, these three experts in, in primary care and in other areas, and then a specialist in primary care physicians and, and a representation of, of clinics and <clears throat> many other features. Um, uh, and you can think, see that there's some fairly thoughtful thinking that goes on, um, you know, about how to characterize kind of in a generic way, affliction. Um, um, so, you know, progressing from discomfort, but without pathology to kind of, um, uh, to, to sort of symptomatic um, disease to complications, et cetera. And there's a lot of a lot of thinking that went on during this week together with our with our partners. Um, but what I want to draw attention to is <clears throat> this uh, kind of treatment state chart where um, you know there were a set of a, a series of sort of um, engagements in the course of a of a of a given um, a given session with a primary care physician um, uh, sort of work to to establish trust with the patient, you know, check physical symptoms. Um, the team that wrote this used rather more code than I would have been inclined to use, but but it's um, it's sort of compartmentalized. It's it's hidden behind these things. So basically, check physical situation, um, and you know, do they need to? Is are they in a situation to effectively continue the treatment? If so, try to have discussions about mental health issues, if there is that trust established. Um, and then, you know, sort of their to social, their social situation, and then sort of their, their, their financial well-being and so on. Um, and then sort of evaluating um, treatment. So this is another example of, of using state charts to, uh, to, to illustrate, um, to illustrate, um, you know, principles of, of engagement. Um, here, the, the, the action, excuse me, action charts. Action charts are being used to represent sort of a process over time, less a kind of instantaneous decision making um, in, a, in a structured way, but rather sort of a series of successive engagements um, which are taking place in, in a given encounter where. Um, you know, more and more sensitive discussions are taking place, basically. And, and those discussions might open up new lines of understanding and inquiry and um, context knowledge um, uh, from um, between doctor and, 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 and a clinician and patient. I'm going to show also a breastfeeding model. This is a published breastfeeding model, which um, uh, because of of um, it was predominantly built by uh, another lead modeler, but with 
someone in my group. Um, I haven't distributed it um, fully, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show it here. Um, and uh, pardon me for just a second. I will just go retrieve it, and I'm gonna download it. And unfortunately, you don't have have access to this right now. Um, I'm not in a position to share it right now, but um, I will show it to you. And there's a published paper on this um, with uh, uh, Lin Kuei Jiang of UCLA um, having led this, this great work. And her work focused on breastfeeding and, and sustaining breastfeeding. And um, there was a, uh, which, which offers you know, health benefits to mom and, and baby. And here again, there was sort of a, a segmented use of these of these day charts. You know, does the woman have a lactation consultant? If so, does she go to it? Um, uh, and does she return? If she does, does she return to breastfeeding? And um, or and does she engage in partial breastfeeding together with formula? Um, and and these are all quite um, simple. So the, the bits of code here are very, very simple behind it in contrast to that last model. Um, for example, this quit breastfeeding, that's the description and it just sends a quit message. That's how it's actualized. Um, that's how it's implemented or realized. But this sort of action chart, again, is something that can be really useful for discussion back and forth. Um, and uh, yeah, Maggie. I'll show you in just a moment. We're we're going to go through, and and it's not it's not entirely obvious, but I'll I'll show you how to break it up. Yeah. Um. So, Kurt had mentioned that, you know, when it came to the COVID nineteen ABM, there was um. Uh, the primary interface for system stakeholders, for our chief medical public or in, in, in health officer for the province, for example, with, with whom we met once or twice a week for, for a couple of years, um, or you know, the heads of the emergency operations committee, the EOC and so on. Those typically didn't involve taking them and sitting them down next to the model and looking at the model. But there was a smaller group um, associated with that, um, that that would be in a position to kind of look uh, at those state charts. Um, so Jenny Basran, um, notably as the head of that group, had done exactly that, sitting down next to Kurt, and then Yuan Tian, another doctoral student of mine, to go through state charts or logic in a discrete event simulation. She was very empowered for that. And, and in some teams, in, 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 in many teams you have, health scientists who aren't themselves modelers, but who sit down next to the model and, and engage. And this is the sort of thing where my student Xiao Yan worked alongside Ling Hui. And at first Ling Hui was new to this sort of modeling, but then became very conversant. But this would allow Ling Hui to really easily understand it, to see it transparently and show it to people like Mei Wong, who is the head of the group and, and Ling Hui's supervisor in ways that were immediately understandable. I know Wade, uh, you also work with Cheryl Waldner, who you know, goes and modifies models a little bit here and there, but she's also someone who's very comfortable like, looking at state charts and commenting and, and making suggestions. So these, these types of visuals, like when you're, when you're in a much larger organization like the Saskatchewan Health Authority or, or you're, you're, bold, or you're you know, producing results from Ministry of Health, most people get those model results, don't see this. But a, a modeling team may well, and um, these sorts of, um, of visuals to illustrate kind of logic of a model, kind of algorithmic logic of a model or decision-making logic of a model can be really helpful for those discussions with health scientists who, who lack formal training in modeling or, or you know, they haven't gone to a boot camp like this, but they can still come understand. And that's important. So let's see how to build up state charts. Okay, so um, I don't have a um, a really nice uh, example that we have time to to cover, but I'm going to go back to uh, one of our models and I'll I'll show you know how it how it could be built up. Okay, 
Um, and uh, some of you may you know, want to explore that. Um, so the key thing with action charts is they were kind of, um, any logic felt, th they weren't convinced that they were seeing much use or love until we talked with them and we, or at least our voice was, was quite loud that they're very, very useful, really useful. And um, we'd like to see them. Uh, we don't tap all, all uses of them, but we tap, we've, we've made good use of them. I found a good dozen models or something where we've, we've used them um, uh, and where it's really been useful. So I'd like to show how to do it. So if you go to the palette, you'll actually find that they're not, not listed here in the default palette. You, you can search through here and you won't find them. You need this little plus at the bottom, okay? And you'll notice there's a thing called action chart. So the plus allows you to add libraries to your model, okay? Um, and, um, and there's an action chart library. And the action chart provides these different pieces that we've just been seeing. Right. Uh, so uh, we have here the ability to, to add in the start of the action chart, which somewhat confusingly is called action chart. And, uh, and then we have the ability to, um, to go and you know, adjust uh, or put in other pieces that represent components of the algorithm. So um, I'm going to drag in and um, Pardon me as I just do one, one sort of side thing here. Um, okay. Um, uh, you could drag in an action chart uh, head here and um, you know, label it. Um, so this is uh, maybe um, uh, you know, uh, uh, stent discussion state chart for for dealing with someone who has more advanced cardiovascular disease. And once you have that component, you can end up sort of piecing these things together. So you can, you, you can, you can pull these together. Right now, these are, this is a return statement together with this, um, this sort of initial, uh, initial um, component. Um, so this is the beginning of it. And this is the um, is the return, and okay. Now I'm having trouble manipulating this. Okay, um, wait. I'm going to need your help because I thought you could just uh, delete this. Basically, with an action chart. You remember this? Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to insert it in between, like that. Um, so you can sort of paste them in between them. Is kind of the logic of it. So I'm putting a, a decision there. And if I wanted a kind of hierarchical decision like we saw earlier, you would go something like that. This is the return. This is the sort of final place that it goes. Um, but we can end up putting in this sort of extra logic. And notice that each of these has some logic behind it, but it also has a label, okay? So you could say, you know, um, um, is the patient in um, overall good health? I, um, you know, and uh, or maybe you you judge, you know, um, uh, patient over sixty or something like that. Maybe that would be a better thing. So uh, you know, patients um, age over 60 um, and and if it's true, you know uh, we end up uh, going uh, going down and, and sort of not continuing. If it's false, then we we ask you know is the patient's health and, and overall overall good health. And each of these has a label, but it also has a bit of code behind it. So this condition is actually a condition that is checked, you know, here. And so if this person had an age, and maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll add an age in just so you can see it. I'll add an age parameter in here, something like that. 
be rather important for uptake, um, and I'll make it a double. Um, then, you know, we could uh, we could make this. You know, is their age greater than sixty? And so it would be, you know, the things behind here, and these conditions would flow it out. Now, if you wanted to undertake an action based on this condition, you could put in place a, a further block. Um, so going down again to, to action charts, um, you can place, you know, bits of code here. Um, so this might be, you know, perform, uh, perform. Uh, stent, um, um, stent surgery or something like that, um, um, and uh, and and you know this this could basically have code which realizes it by sending a message to the patient or by queuing them up for the surgery, um, um, and and you know having them go through the process. In a clinic, um, uh, a discrete event simulation. So, so that's the basic uh, gist of state charts. You, I mean, of action charts. You'll notice that it further has a set of, um, of blocks of many sorts, right? It has loops, while loops, um, representation of, of uh, do while, which is another variant that I mentioned in the. Java tutorial passing. Um, it, you can introduce variables, and uh, a break is something that kind of breaks you out of a loop, and a return is something that that returns. So, um, this is a function. Having created this, I could. Oh, this is not a state. Um, uh, event um, or action. Um, anyway. I could call this now, and it would go through the sequence and, and perform um, perform that logic and undertake the actions that that are involved here. Normally, these are undertaken to perform some results, to undertake, you know, to to achieve some result, to perform an action. Um, they're a command in the language I used in the Java tutorial, rather than a query. But you can get it to return a value. So, if if you have a, a bit of logic that you want to make visually transparent to stakeholders, or to yourself, or or others, just to, to remind yourself of the logic, um, you could you know to calculate something. Maybe it's a risk calculator, right? Um, so, of the sort for a cardiovascular, I'm calculating it for PDQ9 scale for a for a Scale for depression, or, or or what have you, um, you could have it return a, a score, you know, for that, and this would calculate the score. So, these action, the these action charts, I think, are quite nice objects for engaging with with stakeholders. Um, so, uh, I I would recommend them for visually transparent models, and we we do have a good probably dozen or more models. Um, most of which are, are not yet shared, but uh, which are on here. And, um, you know, I'm glad to show them to anyone who's privately interested in seeing them. I could walk you through a bunch of other, other examples. But um, I think they're they're very nice kind of addition to the modeling toolbox um, for visual models. Hopefully that's, that's helpful. Okay, a little bit of action charts. And just remember, in order to find them, you need to go down to that, to this menu and find that extra palette to enable them because they're not enabled by default. Okay, action charts, ladies and gentlemen, action charts. Okay, so I'm going to um, uh, start um, or no, finish up this presentation and start the next. Uh, so here we go, okay. Um,